not even close to being the sworn enemy of lying, pomposity, smugness, and group think that Tucker Carlson is, I, Mel McGinnis, will still think clearly, reason soundly with respect to faith, religion, politics, and culture. Oh, this is a wonderful time. I love July 4th. Summer season without July 4th wouldn't be the same if we wouldn't celebrate our independence. Do you know, leading up to July 4, 1776, the Continental Congress issued a proclamation for May 17th, 1776, to be a day of humiliation, prayer, and fasting, urging fellow citizens to confess and bewail their manifold sins and transgressions, and by sincere repentance and amendment of life, appease God's righteous displeasure through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ to obtain his pardon and forgiveness. Let me tell you something. It wasn't Pride Month prefacing the bold declaration for our independence but a solemn, soul-searching contrition before God to usher in his blessing. There was nothing back then even close to calling the colonists to celebrate pride. In the American hymn, My Country Tis of Thee, the land of pilgrim's pride bears no resemblance whatsoever to the unrestrained pride flaunted openly in public today. Imagine being outraged over a baby getting to live and Hollywood women so proud as to shout their abortions. Though they wrongfully held slaves and tried to unjustly defend it, the Confederacy never celebrated Slave Month let alone Pride Month. It was unthinkable since the pride flag shows up in government-run schools, corporations, on metropolitan police cars, and even the Boy Scouts. Isn't it understandable to those devoted and sensitive to the authority of God's word to feel the uneasiness intensify when liberal churches proudly paint pride colors on their steps and prominently drape the flag over altars and pulpits. Spotting the pride flag at churches, Jane's revenge will likely restrain the rage of vandalism against them inclining others in the pro-abortion culture of death to pass over religious establishments colored with pride. An unnerving reversal of the Passover is descending upon us, leaving crisis pregnancy centers and biblically faithful churches in the crosshairs of their violent foes. Proverbs 16.19 says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Does Pride Month set up a nation for rising or falling? One of the seven deadly sins includes haughty eyes. Do the eyes of those representing pride appear haughty or humble? Jesus warns about the evils issuing from the heart and one of the many things he lists from Mark chapter 7 verses 21 and 22 is pride. Like the May 17, 70, 76 proclamation pointed out, our sins are manifold. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Well, unlike Tony Kornheiser, of pardon the interruption, and I cannot promise you that I'll try to do better the next time.